And here we are with one more for all of the marbles. You know, there's not a lot of hands I would keep. Actually, that's that's a lie. I keep a lot of sketchy hands. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Hero Blade holds just that good. Wow, we've dodged Mono Red this entire time. That's kind of hard to believe. Uh, still going to lead with the island in case we hit Legacies of Lore. Uh, then we'll run out the two planes. Uh, provided we don't hit Legacies of Lore, for example. Uh, drawing Banishing Light feels good, too. Okay, Looter's just fine. Gives us something to do with these extra lands. It's like, I, I don't mind having five lands, but... Alright. Let's get our loot on then, shall we? That's just value, man. So here I'm actually going to wait and loot until the end of their turn because I, I need to know if, if this resolves, if they untap and kill it, exactly what's up. It may change what I want to have in my hand or what I don't. Well, with that, it kind of doesn't matter, so we'll loot now. We can kind of untap and wreck anything they do here. You gonna Oblivion Stone to get rid of my Merfolk Looter? That seems a little crazy. Like, I could Council's Judgment that... I mean, generally speaking, my board, my deck doesn't want to play against board wipes. I slammed the land because I think I am locked into that plan and, and doing that plus playing the Legacies of Lore is I think pretty good for me. Like what I don't want to happen is for them to jam a lot of big stuff and the looter is value over time. I'm willing to give this a go. Okay, that, that was easy. I'll again wait and loot at the end of their turn so we have more information about what we want to keep. I'm not sure what blue-green deck wants to run O-Stone. I might have run it in this one, though, to be fair. Like, it's a slow Wrath, but it's a Wrath. Frost Titan? Sure. We may have to borrow that. Uh, that means I actually do want another land. Yeah, I think that means the Cloud Skate's out. Because I, I need the two to pay for this when I cast this, the Oblivion thing. So yeah, Cloud Skate's got to go. Sorry, buddy. We'll miss you. And it's two, right? Yeah, it's two. Yoinks. Avenger of Zendikar, you say? Well... They're going to have a bunch of zero ones. I can handle that.
I don't think I care about a bunch of zero ones. I might if they untap an opposition. But I guess I can at least unexpectedly absent the opposition and then maybe steal one of these. This looks like a deck that would be running opposition. Which is a little terrifying. Student, I don't think, does enough for me here. Although it is a good attacker, I like having the two answer spells. So I think you gotta go, buddy. That That's an easy loot, because I don't want this land. But really, or that one. So the question is, do I want to use a removal spell on this? Or just tap it and swing? I think I'm okay tapping it and swinging, especially if I get to keep unexpectedly absent up. Which I do. Interesting. Am I going to get Crater Hoof Behemoth? I'm probably going to get Crater Hoof Behemoth. That's unfortunate. That's not a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Okay, I can take that. That means they've got one in the deck. And I need to make sure I don't die to it. That's five, six, seven, eight mana. Five, six, seven, eight. It's like I'm starting to get pretty interested in getting their stuff out of the way. Care about Jace. Just need to make sure we don't die to a crater hoof. And I, I don't know that there's legitimately any way to stop it. Other than make sure they're dead this turn. Uh, another Frost Titan actually does the trick. Another Frost Titan does the trick. So I can't really go to tap that or they just activate it, right? We're going to steal this, but I'm going to let it untap first. So I think, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I attack and tap down a land and then play another Frost Titan tapping down another land, they have to have Crater Hoof and land to get me. I think I'm down with that. I'm going to ignore Baby Jace. This also means I think they have to chump some, which is going to make the Crater Hoof war worse. And th that's presuming they even have one. Take a Frost Titan. I guess I could make take, make a Sower of Temptation, but I feel like I want the other Frost Titan. And I can derp this now because they can't uh, give it Hexproof. Let's just go ahead and borrow this before things get weird. I was terrified of a Crater Hoof Behemoth the whole time. 
So again, we've kind of pre-sideboarded against a specific deck and not run into it. So things like the Finks and the Student of Warfare can just beat it. I have been impressed with this swap. Although I think I actually prefer Lenvala here. Or maybe I just want both. I don't hate that. We can play both. They look like they're going to be susceptible to flyers. So things like Flicker Wisp can be quite good against that style of deck. Uh, Spectral Procession can be quite good. Uh, Ajani's even reasonable. I, I don't like Ajani so much on the draw. I think I may be interested in him on the play. I think I'm really digging the Flicker Wisp. I think I'm really digging the Flicker Wisp. We haven't gotten opposition once, have we? That's right. I'm, I'm getting a little heavy in my deck, um, but like, and treat sort of a five drop. Like if you spread out the curve, a little closer to where it could actually be. And this is like worst case scenario, right? Five mana, four, four. I guess worst case scenario is you don't have triple white, but. And these are X spells, so they can kind of fit in anywhere. I, I think I like this. I think I like it. We need to hit another land, but the Temple of Enlightenment is here to help us do that. Then we can potentially nab something with a Spell Queller. Kind of just interested in a land here. Planes would be perfect, so I think any non-planes goes to the bottom. Like, having the opposition is exciting. Having drawn a land is good. Uh, we need a white source. Yeah, that's a tough one, because if I keep this, I can certainly cast the Opposition, which I like. But I think I really need the next land to be a white one. Like, Spell Queller Opposition does something. I'm almost assuredly playing the Spell Queller next turn, if we can nab anything with it. Even if we can't, I'll run it out to start pecking for some damage. Attack me. No such luck. Okay, we hit anyway. I don't think I want a hidden dragon slayer outright meow. It's awkward to have spell queller against a ramp deck, eh? Because there may not be anything to quell. But we will see. Yes, we will see. Them not popping Steve was probably not good news for us. Maybe it means they just don't have anything big to cast, I guess. Oh, man, that is unfortunate. But I, I can't, I can't do it now. We're locked into it. The very least, block this guy and make him do something with it. But if I can catch a spell, even better. I probably can't. Like, they're not likely to cast little stuff at this point. They've got tons of mana. I may even let this hit me just on the off chance that I can counter something. Because, like, they look like they're playing around a counter spell by attacking first. Which may mean rather than running out something big, they run out something little. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're going to have to, uh,. Get that uh, banishing light going. Mistress Factory is a good one.
jamming Vanishing Light isn't terrible here um, because it lets me get the Colonnade into play. I will still potentially have a Dragon Slayer slash opposition for the, the next big thing. But I think this certainly needs to be banished. I, I'm not going to play around a Force Spike, although I suppose I could have. The bad news for us is there's a lot of uh, enchantment removal in green. It's like we could be in a little bit of trouble, y'all. I'm glad we sent that other island at the bottom. Kind of scared of whatever this is. I don't know what they're doing, but I don't like it. Stop having things. Stop it. Stop having them. Frost Titan? No. Not a Frost Titan. I can't even effectively opposition that. That's going to be a problem. That's the Titan that we kind of can't deal with. That is not the Titan I wanted to be interacting with. Oh, um, Ermagerd. Not Frost Titan. All right. I think we're on um, cast a hidden Dargan Slayer and then try to kill the Frost Titan next turn and hold this back to block. It's not a particularly lovely place to be, but it is where we are. It's gonna take all of my mana next turn to do that. And we're probably going to take nine. So we're really leaning on this Dragon Slayer to pull double duty. We, we kinda have to hope they're just out of gas now. That's a sign that they may be out of gas. I didn't attack because I thought there was a chance they tap it out. They're just going to keep the colonnade locked down. That's fine. I can't afford to double block that. We've got to take the nine. Like if I don't answer this, the game's over. I can answer it in game three. That's not a bad turn. Or potentially answer it and, you know, hold it to block or whatever. Yeah, it's, that's where we got to be. I think I got to hold it to block. Right, because if I swing with it and they take it, they swing back, I'm at seven. Really, the only thing they can swing with is this if I hold back my Spell Queller. So how much could they do if they swung with the team? I block that guy, I take five, six, seven. Yeah, so I'm dead. If I swing. I may be dead if I don't, but the idea is I could block this, block that, take four, gain three. We're dead to them having various removal spells. A uh, hero can be a hero and save us here in just a little bit, though. Gotta, I guess Vapor Snag kills me, but this doesn't.
It's an interesting attack. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I guess they're going to crack that guy, which is fine. I feel like we're back stable now. Flickering, that's cute. Because it takes him off a good bit of mana. I, I think I like that. I need the hero to resolve. Ah, well, apparently it's not going to, but that's okay. That was my plan. This is now my plan. That wasn't like my best token maker ever, but... I, I guess if I w w wanted to be really smart, what we could have done was exile uh, Flicker the Temple of Enlightenment and get another scry. Because this does take them off some mana, but like they've got plenty of lands. It's not like I'm doing much there. They got a crater hoof now? Yeah. So it, it didn't really matter what I did, we were just dead. Uh, that is what I was terrified of last game, and it got me here. Oh, we were a little bit too far behind to really get anywhere with that. That's unfortunate. I mean, they only got me down to negative 13, so we'll take it. They're actually surprisingly able to put on some pressure, so like the, the Kitchen Fink starts to look interesting again. It also got a lot more grindy than I expected. Mana Tithe would have been good there, huh? I never managed to get the opposition in play where it mattered. Maybe this is actually not the matchup for it. I have a hard time believing there's a matchup where you don't want opposition. I can believe I don't want Linvala. I talked myself into it before. I don't think I want it here. I think Spectral Procession looks good, and I think Mana Tithe looks good, and I'm going to hedge on the Spectral Procession. It, it looks like pressuring them with Flyers is probably my surest path to victory. Alright, this just needs a couple lands and we're in business. And if, if I have to unexpectedly absent an Elf next turn, I will happily do so. Or maybe we just play a Soulfire Grandmaster and are pretty happy about that. Really hoping there's land on top. There's not. That feels bad. And I don't like it. I was going to say I'll bounce whatever they cast here. <coughs> But that is one of the few things I don't want to bounce. I probably do need to bounce the elf. Like, it only takes them off one mana. But it means I get to cast it. And if I hit exactly a land, I still get an attack with the Grandmaster here. I can rip another land into a uh, hero of blade hold. We're in business. Oh, come on! All right, island, island. Ah, oh, that works. That works.
It's not great. It does mean they probably can't get my thingy. I would happily trade this for the Trigon Predator, or maybe even the Elf. I don't think there's many worlds in which they block, but... I'll take a 3-mana 4-4 four, four Flyer. I can't really attack with it into that Trigon Predator uh, unless we draw a blue. Secure the Waste is pretty good too. Alright, they're at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They could conceivably um, do the thing. So the question is, am I willing to trade the Glorious Anthem for hitting them for 5 damage? Because they've got blocks now, right? They block here and here, potentially. Maybe I'm not if, we've, if we're going with Secure the Waste. Because, like, Secure the Waste end of turn for a pair of tutus can attack pretty good here. I'd still love to untap, like, draw a blue source. And then just get them. Ambush that Trigon Predator with my Spell Queller. Freaking behemoth, man. All right, so we're taking 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We will be able to swing back for four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that means I'm supposed to take this hit. Because, like, chumping doesn't look like it does anything. Next turn ain't going to be great for me either. But I can chump with these tokens if I need to. I mean, this is just a 5-5 five five at its base, right? Oh, let's make sure I've done the math. 24, leaving me at 5. And then we go back up by 2 to 7. Yeah, I'm just supposed to take this hit. Could also draw like Council's Judgment, which I think gives us a, a pass here. Alright, so we've got to do some math here. We've got 6, 7, 8 on board. If I crack, I go to 7 and I'm dead on the swing back. So we're probably not going to do that. Um, if I swing with these two, I hit them for 6, which is half of their life total, which I like. And then I can potentially... I, I could play this face down. I could also play it face up. This guy does not have trample on its own. So if I swing with these two, we go to 7. They swing back. I chump. block and take five and then the dragon slayer handles it so I, I think that's my line i don't think it leaves me very many outs um if, if they have anything else in hand the, the other option is swing with the team and then chump that where, where would that put me because like that that means they have to have stone nothing the reason that's interesting is is because like we hit for eight, they're at four. This will kill them next turn. They'd have to hold this back to chomp. So if I swing there, I go to seven. I play this and chomp that, and then take four, five, six, gain two. That puts me dead to a removal spell, dead to a frost titan. But it, I, I have to swing. 
either these two or everything and then hope that they don't have any interaction. Six, seven. Hitting for seven puts them at five, and that's just not lethal. All right, I, I, I think that leaves me basically go for it or don't here. The fact that I'm not putting them dead next turn leads me to just want go want to go for this move and give myself a few more turns. Like all I'm doing is forcing a chump with the Trigon Predator. Like, this play has some game against a Frost Titan, the other one just doesn't. I scoop to it. This is the moment where we figure out if they've got something. Okay. That's not good, and like, without a land, I still probably can't do much. But I mean, such is the story of the game. I thought that's what they might do. Because that enables them to continue forcing damage. I've almost got to hit a land here. Although, I do get to chomp. They have correctly identified that I cannot block with this. I don't think they're doing their math right. Because it, it seems like this is really, really free. And I get to keep a token for chumping porpoises next turn. So I take four here. I untap. I blow this up. Yeah, that still doesn't really get me anywhere. I mean, we solved that problem. But I'm going to have to chump again, probably with one of my life linkers. But I don't think chumping that does much for me. Like, going to three doesn't make anything lethal that's not already lethal. As long as I... Well, does it? Does it? Because, like, my next turn's locked up, right? They attack, they tap down this guy, or they tap down the angel. They're getting in for two. And I'll have three blockers. One. Two, three. Yeah, I'm not dead this way. In, unless I've miscounted somehow. I mean, is there any reason not to pop this now? I, I can't think of one. Mindslaver? Sure. I mean, that's probably not going to end well for me, but... Oh, we could top deck Council's Judgment and still have another turn. <sighs> We've played a surprising game for being stuck on three lands. If they just swing with that, that is exceptionally cautious. I'd, I'd swing with the Predator, too. I 
All right, where's it going? Tapping down that guy. That means I could conceivably win this game. Well, not really. Not really. What am I looking to do? I, I guess I'm looking to be able to chump block that next turn. I'm probably looking to hit Council's Judgment, chump block it, and then die. If I do hit Council's Judgment and I kill that, I can eat this guy, go back up to three. I just, I don't think having this in play does a whole lot. We could also, I suppose, hit a blue source and maybe they don't mind slaver me. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's that's probably going to be the end of us. Because uh, we're just dead on board to the, the Frost Titan. That's unfortunate, but you know, you're not going to win many games where you have three lands on turn nine. I think we did everything we could to keep this competitive, but uh, just never really got there, unfortunately. Unexpectedly absent um, wouldn't even do it because we'd need the extra two to copy here. It's a shame. I think this deck was better than that, but meh, sometimes you're the pigeon, sometimes you're the statue. Swords of Plowshares. Those, those are good cards that we don't have. Crater Both Behemoth is a very powerful magic card as well. So, as I mentioned before, in classic Travis fashion, uh, we have 2 one another uh, cube draft. Uh, that's kind of what I've been doing in cube. <laughs> uh, but I've been having fun while I've been doing it. So I appreciate y'all watching. Um, come check out the stream. It's at twitch.tv slash simulan. Um, we will be doing Aether Revolt uh, the week that you see this, actually. Uh, so you'll see this on Monday. We'll be doing Aether Revolt drafts there a little later that week. So come on by. I'll be looking for you. All right. Y'all have a good one.